Now we look at a nuclear threat facing the U.S. and how it relates to China's hypersonic weapons. It all started with a story from news outlet Financial Times. Citing unnamed sources, the outlet says Beijing tested a nuclear-capable hypersonic missile. And even though Beijing denies the test, the news is making a splash and still picking up steam. And what makes a hypersonic missile concerning? In short, Beijing can use it to launch a nuclear strike against the U.S., and it'd be hard for America's defense system to track it. A U.S. arms control official says we just don't know how we can defend against that technology. Neither does China, neither does Russia. So what are hypersonic missiles? To put it simply, they are missiles that can travel at least five times faster than sound. And there are two types of them. One is called hypersonic cruise missile. The other is called hypersonic glide vehicle, or HGV. And the one that Beijing reportedly tested is an HGV. It's more expensive and harder to build, but it's faster and more suitable for a sneak attack. Right now, America's defense systems are mainly designed to intercept traditional ballistic missiles. They follow a predictable arc, so it's easy for radar to detect them and shoot them down. But HGVs are a different story. They fly much lower and can maneuver before hitting a target, making them much harder to track. By the time a radar can detect them, it might already be too late to react. The U.S. does have a kind of defense system that can deal with HGV strikes. But some argue they can only defend small areas, not enough to cover the continental USA. So right now, who has HGVs? China and Russia. And China has tested its HGVs at least nine times since 2014. But Beijing keeps a low profile and hasn't released any information on their accuracy. The U.S. is developing its own HGV projects, but they are still in the prototype period. Other nations like Japan and Australia are also investing in their own research. The U.S. arms control official says the U.S. has held back from pursuing this technology. But seeing that China and Russia are actively militarizing it, the U.S. has to respond in kind.